So these are, this feels to me like a cold open. And welcome to where the heck are we? Oh my god! What is going oh on? Oh my god! Where Matt. are we? Something clearly has gone wrong here. I where's caffeine? Caffeine's gone. The shelves are gone. But drama llama. The, the couch is vaguely blending into the background. The the background is more flattering for the skin. What? what, what where are we? The background's flattering for the skin, and yet there's glare everywhere. Oh god! Oh, it's such a mess. Oh, where are we? It's almost like we're in a state of transition without uploading things in the proper order because the upload that's going up right now is more timely. Oh, no. Oh, so they're going to be so confused. Oh, nothing makes sense anymore. And it's not even like we backlogged a lot. We were like two ahead. Oh, God. We what were... have we done? Oh, we had like five in the can. Did we have five in the can? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, good for us. Right? We have five in the can. Yeah. That's that's all, that's like a week. I, I know. We're like a week ahead? It's like oh, over a week. Oh, good for GT us. GT Live World. Good for us. Right? Man, if only the other channels were like functional <laughs> like, yeah dt live Woo! Woo! hey guys welcome to dt oh, oh, oh there you go nice. okay welcome to dt not live and uh our transitional space uh like i vaguely alluded to here a second ago we do preface this in one of the episodes that we filmed uh literally yesterday um that'll be going up next week but because the fnaf trailer just dropped we kind of had to do things out of sequence so if there's a little bit of wonkiness in the lore of the series you're going to consider this your sneak preview of season six of GT <laughs> Not Live. GT Live. The, the entity that is this channel. Season six. There it is. Man, I we've been cooking so much behind the scenes. There's been a lot of cooking. And there was going to be like this great reveal. Like we'll walk. Uh, the yeah. walk action. Yeah, the crock pot's out. You the, know. Wow, crock pot. <laughs> we're, we're slow cooking, but we're wok frying. <laughs> and we're stone bowling it. Yeah, man. Put it all in a nice stone bowl where it continues to cook. Yeah, there's like a, a bibimbap. A lot of oh yeah, yes. <laughs> Just serving up the content. <laughs> the bibimbap. <laughs> hey, there's a new FNAF trailer, and I have not seen it, but I hear that we should be reacting to it. Yeah, man. <laughs> yes. Is there sure. A, sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. You you seem unconvinced. I, You're the one who's like, hey, sit down on the couch and react to this. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel awesome about that message, but like, I knew I knew it had to be done. It, it, sometimes it, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Right. Right. Sometimes there is a new FNAF trailer and you got to sit down on the couch and analyze it. It is two minutes, mm -hmm. which means we're estimating a grand total upload of 45, 50. This is part one of five. This right. Is, this is part one of five. Between now and the FNAF movie trailer, we'll be uploading one of these a week. One of these a week. One of these a week as we analyze it. <laughs> uh, no, here, here, I have a feeling we're going we're gonna to keep it short. Really? We're going to keep it brief, Ash. Really? Keep it brief. And then we can get back to cooking. And then we'll get back to walk frying. Right. <laughs> Getting the glare off this fan art right there. I know. <laughs> Just... I... Shout out to GT Live, whose fan art is currently covered in glare. Just glare. Just, just blinding brightness behind me. Okay. FNAF official trailer. Is this the final one? Is this the final trailer before the movie? Well, it's the second one. And sometimes they say that second is the best. First is the worst. Second is the best. Third is the one. With the hairy chest. Oh, I always knew treasure chest. What? Yeah. No. Are you kidding me? Third is the one with you. the treasure chest? Yeah. Oh, that made, that's so much better. I know. Because <laughs> I, um, for me, third was the one with the hairy, hairy chest. And it's like, oh, that's unfortunate. The times have changed. Gonna, gonna be going through a lot of razors. I, third is supreme. No, it was, it was very clearly like, basically anything that wasn't two sucked. Yeah. When I was growing up. Like, if you, if you weren't two, you were nothing. You were worst. You had a hairy chest. You were, <laughs> that was all you knew. <laughs> Actually, there's like, no, no one gets to four. Everyone forgets oh, four. Four is the one with the polka dot dress. Are you kidding me? I'm not is kidding it, you. Hold up. This is, see, this is the lore I want. I'm so sorry. This is the lore I want. So how, how deep does this go? Um, I, Cause I, we stopped at three. I remember hearing up to five. Okay. But four I remember is polka up dot to dress. four. Here. Five on. is alive. No, are they all, they all have to rhyme with dress? First is the worst. 
Second is the best. <laughs> Let us know Third down is... in the comments. This uh, FNAF trailer, oh, spooky animatronics. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below. What is your, like, first is the worst, second is the best? Because I, I think we all agree on that one, at least. Yeah, she's pulling it up. Okay, so we're on mamalisasworld.com. Mamalisas? Mamalisa.com okay. slash blog. Um, Here, I could I could I could pull it up. Okay, first is the worst, second is the best, third is the one with the ha hairy chest, yeah. fourth is the one with the polka dot dress, fifth is the one with the treasure chest. Fifth! Okay, here's here's Reddit. I'm going to Reddit. First is the worst, second is the best, continue. Third, the tur that's not it. You're you're wrong. Yeah, wrong. New, new world order. <laughs> third is the one with the treasure chest. Third is the hairy hairy chest. Third, the turd. Fourth, the dwarf. What? Doesn't, that a, zero the hero, first the worst, second the best, third the one with hairy chest, fourth the one with the golden gun, fifth the Whoa. one with the monkey bum, sixth the king, seventh the queen, eighth the one stuck in the washing machine, <laughs> ninth the one with the golden eagle, tenth the ghost climbing a lamppost. <laughs> Whoever deleted, I am so sorry that you had to delete your account or what, you are a hero. Whoever this person, you are zero. You are zero the hero right here. You are zero the hero. Four, deleted account four years ago, zero the, you are zero the hero. Minus the highness, zero the hero, first the worst, second the best, there's the one with hairy chest. Fourth the one with the golden gun, fifth the one with the crusty bum. Sixth Ooh. the one who sucks his thumb. <laughs> I, wow. Oh, this is the lore I want. I'm stuck on 8th is in the washing machine. <laughs> right, I feel like someone needs to really help 8. I, like, yeah. get, get that person out of the washing. I'm very concerned about 8. I mean, have you been in a washing machine? I have, actually, yes. What, okay, what was your washing machine experience? Oh, uh, great. When you were, your 8th experience, I guess. Oh, like what, when, when I was 8? No, or, like... Because I because I recently got into a washing machine. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, when you're in the washing machine, that is now known as your 8th experience. Unexplained. Just <laughs> <laughs> completely unexplained. Well, because I also have this niche life experience. Yes. So I want to hear it from I, you first. Yeah, yes, I've, I've been on in washing machines a couple times. Uh -huh. And in general, I find them to be... I'm a little bit unnerved because... They, you feel the drum move, and I right. worry that I'm gonna un permanently unbalance the drum. Right. I do worry about that. I'm like, oh no, this is going to break the washing machine. Yeah. So I'm like, uh oh, hopefully this doesn't unbalance things. But once I'm in there, it's kind of like, you know, it's like nice and cozy, and you know, it's it's contained. Yeah. Feels good. Uh -huh. Do not do not get into washing machine. I, I probably should say this. Do not get into washing machines or dryers or, dryers or refrigerators. Don't do it. They are safer now than they've ever been, but don't do it. Stop. Don't be lying in appliances. <laughs> don't be lying in appliances. That's part of this. Yeah. I've heard that. Eighth is the one stuck in the washing machine. Don't be lying in appliances. <laughs> yeah. That's part of this. That's the ending of it. It is. So wait, what's? do you disagree? Because I find washing machines and dryers delightful. Oh, they're very comforting to be inside. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop it. If you're thinking for it, do not, don't be like stupid YouTubers. Be safe. But really, tell me about how nice it is to be in your washer and dryer. Oh, it was very pleasant. It's very pleasant. I, you know, I did it for a weird theatrical thing. Yeah. And part of it, in lieu of having an elevator, yeah. we pulled in, we pulled in a washing machine and we took out the back and I had to crawl inside of it and like push the door open and then crawl head first out of the appliance. It's... Instead of an elevator, so so the washing machine was an elevator replacement? Yeah. Like I, it was meant to, because, yeah, I'm, think I'm they, sorry, I'm very confused, I'm so confused. Uh-huh, yeah, I think Is that like, fair? I, should I be confused no, in this moment? No, I, I understand you, and I think that makes sense. Okay. Right? So, I, I feel like it was like symbolic of a womb or something, like... I don't know, but the elevator In your was a, theater show. Yes. But why would the womb be an elevator? <laughs> well, because So it's so the womb is the thing. So where are we starting here? So the womb uh -huh. was the thing that was being represented on stage in a theatrical manner? Yes. And so your first go-to option here was an elevator. Yes. Are you talking about a real elevator? Yes. 
It was supposed to have rain inside of it. My mind is so broken right now. And so the elevator with no rain in it mm -hmm. was not available that day. Correct. <laughs> and so you're like, we've got a we've got a backup plan here. Wash machine. Mm-hmm. Did the washing machine have rain in it? No, it was completely dry. But was that intentional? Was the washing machine supposed to have rain in it or no? Uh, no, it was intentional to keep it dry. But it was fun because before I popped out, I would like bang on the sides like I was some like crazy thing inside of a washing machine or dryer. Boop, 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 boop. And then I would just <laughs> watch my, it out. My next question is going to be, what is this show that you're talking about? And I hope the answer is Guys and Dolls. I, <laughs> my Oklahoma. <laughs> What? No, here's a lore drop for y'all. This was Eurydice by Sarah Rule. Ah, Eurydice by Sarah Rule. Yes, yes. That's that's a classic. Oh, certified classic. Absolutely, a modern a modern classic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's a moment where an elevator with rain in it is yeah. symbolic of a womb. Well, I, I, it's been a while since I've read no, it. No, for sure. Um, Forgive me for my a theater. It's, lack my lack of theater knowledge right now. It was now. the production's interpretation that the elevator was like that. It was like That's, a rebirth yeah. into the underworld, right? So you're, that was the elevator with rain was the entrance into the underworld after Eurydice goes under because yep. it's Orpheus and Eurydice. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then she, you know, the whole premise is that her her dad. If you don't know is the story the of Orpheus and Eurydice, it's basically Hades Town. If you don't know the story of Hades Town, I can't I can't help you. Then. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I, 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 I can't help you. That's the case. You. So goes down to the underworld, boyfriend goes to rescue her, make sure you don't turn around and then to check on her and then turns around and everyone's stuck. And, and he and, always does. And he he, all, he he do always turn around. It's a canon event. It was probably <laughs> the first canon event. Perhaps the first canon event, yes. It's also a great opera. Yeah. Orpheus and Eurydice, solid mm -hmm. opera. It's really good. Anyway, so mm -hmm. I guess we should talk about the FNAF trailer. Yeah. <laughs> should we? I'm glad that we were both eighth. You know? Yeah, we were both eighth. Yeah. Yeah, my my, I've I've come in and out of washers multiple times in my life, uh -huh. both on this channel or both on Food Theory. Uh, there were moments where just as a as a parent of a child, you know, in a very safe, fun way, you get in the washer and dryer, and they get in the washer, and it's kind of fun. You spin them around, and stuff. Right. It's fun, you know. Before that, just all sorts of excitement in washers and dryers. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Thank you. Deleted. Don't be, don't, don't be a hero. Be a zero. Be a hero. Don't put people in washers and dryers. Hey, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is a thing. It sure is. Now that we've talked about the uh, theatrical work of Sarah Rule, let's let's <laughs> react to the theatrical work of one Scott Cawthon. <laughs> love that play, love, right? Love it. Love that. <laughs> Have feelings towards that. <laughs> Frame one. What do we got? <laughs> Frame one. What do we got? <laughs> Uh, I feel like we've seen a lot of this before. You have the overhead shot of the pizzeria, got the Foxy stage, got the dining room, animatronics on stage. I'm not seeing a whole lot new. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but that seems consistent. Okay. Nothing too exciting there. What would that be? Is that something? That's nothing, right, Ash? You're, uh, you're closer to the screen. What is that? What is what? This, this one right here. What's that one trying to be? Um, oh. Right? Ooh. Right? Looks kind of blobular. Here. Photoshop. Pulling it up. Pulling up the Photoshop. Here we go. Let's see what we got. What do you think that is? Because it is a different color. Like, here's the thing, right? So these are the indoor shots. And you have this kind of like darker palette. Here's an outdoor shot. Uh, of the area outside. So this also would be, based on the color scheme it should and the lighting, it should also be like an outdoor or maybe like back alley shot. It's just interesting. I, I don't think it's necessarily revealing anything. It's a weird shape. Maybe it's the shoulder of Springtrap. He's outside in the world amongst y'all. Amongst all y'all. Um, amongst all y'all. He does kind of look ruined. Ruin! All right, here we go. Old Pete's Place, Old Pete's Place, Foxy Stage. Looks great. Again, the set looks great. 
practical effects, effects here look great. So we saw this shot before in the earlier trailers. Is there anything in here? Is that Balloon Boy? Oh man, we do, we do be zooming in quite a bit today. It's actually easier to look at if you zoom out, I guess. Two kids? Two kids holding balloons or? This, I mean, this one, just saying, no, no, no lore, but just saying, it looks kind of like pigtails. Looks like circus baby. Just saying. Oh. oh. I don't know, that's just me. This, and this, if you look at the shape of this, looks like the Fred Bear singing show. Here, let me. Uh, which one is it? It's that third one. It's the one with him standing, this one. Kind of looks like this. That shape. Just reminds me of it. It's not, it's not exactly, it's just for whatever reason the shape of it looks like that. Hmm. Okay. Is it that easy to break a lock? If it is, I am very impressed. So these are, this feels to me like a cold open. Or like a, hey, this is a, a starter scene of the movie. Or something that says like, oh, this is an initial like scare. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. No. Ah, the, ah, the cupcake. Huh. That is, that is weird. <laughs> Look at the evil dip. Look at the evil narrowing. Don't you mess with my pinball machines. So the, so the cupcake and Chica function separately. So the cupcake, oh, that opens up all sorts of concerns in my mind from a lore standpoint, Ash. So are we saying that <laughs> there were five missing kids, but Susie, I was the first I've seen everything, Susie and Chica, is she also in the cupcake? Like, is she bifurcating her soul? Half of her is operating cupcake? Or is there a six missing kid and maybe Cassidy this whole time, the vengeful spirit is actually in the cupcake? Vengeful cupcake. Vengeful cupcake! That's it. How's this thing killing some? Ah! No! No! <laughs> really? Really? All right. I don't know, man. I like the tasteful lens glare. <laughs> it adds to the spook factor. It does. Okay. I, I think we've gotten like hints of this in the past, but the fact that the cupcake is its own separate entity gives me all sorts of thoughts and all sorts of pause. I... This is me making the conscious decision to not enter it into the lore. I... <laughs> I feel like I catch a lot of flack when I enter things into the lore that actually are believable, let alone things that are like, but, but really, if we're truly analyzing this the way it's meant to be analyzed, these should be two separate things. Unless Chica, like Susie's spirit, just like moves from entity that she's like, I'm in Chica now, I'm going into the cupcake now, now I'm back. I don't know. All sorts of lore questions there. So this feels like a cold open to me. This feels like a, hey, we need to establish the danger of this pizza plex or this pizzeria. And... Maybe it is also establishing why they need a security guard. Where it's, oh, look, there are hooligans or ruffians coming in to mess up the place. And as a result, we need a new security guard to protect this old pizzeria. Oh, wait. Hey, Mike, it's me. Maybe William Afton. I don't know. Giving you a call. Spooky. Okay. But then it's like, oh, look, there's murderous animatronics. It sets up the pizzeria. And then here we go. Piece of cake, really. Good. 
There's a lot here. Security gig. Huh! Matthew Lillard. So, for those of you who follow our, our like, reactions in live theory crafting and have seen the one where I've reacted to the, the first movie trailer before, I was working under the assumption, or the guess, that it was being altered in some way due to the fact that Matthew Lillard has been, you know, it was very public that he, this guy is the guy who's going to be Springtrap. You know, he's, he's cast as William Afton. Everyone's like, oh, he's William Afton. And all his social media has been teasing. I'm the golden bunny man, whatever. But he was also, like, the hire, like the previous trailer showed him in this, like, hiring manager position. And he's, like, hiring on. It seems like he's hiring Mike to do the security guard role. So is he... I'm, I'm confused. I have a job. So he's hiring Mike into the job? For you. Huh. Piece of cake, really. These lines also don't... It's a, it's a weird flow a of lines. It, it, it feels like they've been chopped up. Piece of cake, really. Like, and, and not chopped up in like an organic way. Like, oh, this is an actual flow of conversation. Good. All right, it's broken up. It's a security gig. Huh. So, but he was labeled as Steve Raglan before. So is he William Afton hiring in Mike? I'm confused. I don't know. So it, it's so it could still stand that that shot from the first trailer where it says Steve Raglan, whatever his nameplate said down there, maybe that was altered and it's William Afton and, and this is William Afton in charge of the Pizzaplex. Or I keep saying Pizzaplex because now my mind's in like modern FNAF, but in charge of the pizzeria being like, I'm hiring you in. Huh. Weird. Or has this entire time it been a misdirect? Is Matthew Lillard truly spring? Like, has that been just like them seeding out lore and it's it's just going to be a rug pull? Maybe Steve, I, I don't know. Is is Steve Raglan this this version of William Afton? And we're just like, oh. Or maybe, maybe. Yeah, go for it. William Afton has a fake name for his side job, his side hustle. Which is? Um, Side hustle is hi hiring manager. Being a recruiter. <laughs> mild man mild mannered serial killer become full time hiring manager. Yeah, you know it's a side hustle. In in the office, there was always the theory that Toby was the Scranton strangler, and so he was the HR guy. So something about HR guys and hiring managers and and being serial killers. Maybe that's it. I mean. Look, you have to select victims based on certain criteria. Yeah. And you select candidates based on certain criteria. Oh, really? The skill sets overlap. The Venn diagram overlaps quite considerably. Yeah. They're selectors. <laughs> yeah, they're selectors. Huh. William Afton, huh? Steve Raglan. Hello? Welcome to Freddy's. Get ready to rock. Have you met them yet? Met who? Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy. <laughs> cool. That looks good. I like that. I like. I, I love the just giant Showtime button. The Showtime button is an odd. It's funny because it's like it's not big enough to be like a thing, but it's also just awkwardly small and it's just there on the wall. I feel like if if that's a a faux button of like activate Hello? them. You would expect it to be bigger. Welcome to Freddy's. It's just funny. Have you met them yet? And this is this is right. This is she's cast as Vanessa because of course she is a security guard or a, a police officer named Vanessa who's blonde. Great, because that's not going to mess with the lore at all. That's not going to frustrate all of us. This is on Earth like ninety three. And we're working on Earth right. 60. Yeah. Earth 616 93 99999. Yeah. That's all of them. Meant who? Right, we need to clarify how many multiverses there are in this universe now. Foxy, Bonnie, oh. Chica, looking good. and Freddy. They're looking good. Again, the puppets cannot be faulted here. The, these animatronics look great. 
and so believable. Like the, the translation to him is so good. Back in the 80s. Oh, wait, there was a flashlight. Back in the 80s. Oh man, you know it's the 80s too. Because that guy back there, he is rocking the most mullet of mullets. He, That's the mullet it's, ever. It's, it's, it's like, hey, do you, what, what year was this filmed? Oh yeah, mullets. <laughs> the hard 80s right there. Back in the 80s. Okay, what, this was the flash frame that I was looking for. Boom. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, buddy. It's me. It's Freddy. Okay, here we go. Let's run through it. Back in the 80s. Some kids went missing. What is this? That's why the place shut down. So, okay. So the fact that he's opening up his eyes. Back in the 80s. With his Walkman. Tells me it's like... What is this? This tells me... He's... Asleep? Or listening to some tape? Some kids went missing. The fact that he's being visited by ghosts? Ki missing kids in a woods tells me that maybe him being asleep and this are... Like, this is his dream sequence, right? Um... That seems to be, that would be my guess. That's why the place shut down. So you have your, your respective kids. Some kids went missing. What is this? That's why the place shut down. Okay, this thing. What is, what is this? Again, I like, is, what, what is this device? We've seen in a previous uh, trailer or teaser or whatever that this is a security guard. And so this is likely previous security guard or I could also see this being a potential cold open where it's like, this is the first security guard and now we cut to Mike's story as the new security guard. Like I could see either of those being cold open. Maybe it's some combination of both. Uh, maybe this guy comes in to help save with, the, you know, help kind of like take down the, no, no, because they would need a security guard. Anyway, I think this is one of those, what is this? This has got to be a remnant extractor, right? Like this is not a spring lock suit. A what? A remnant extractor. Huh? Remnant? What else is it? It's not a spring lock suit. I don't it's know. Not, it is a device that is specifically built to kill things. And I don't think ghost kids are building a device like this. Well, it's a Freddy mask. Like, it looks like a Freddy mask, right? I, yeah, is it just like... It's a Freddy mask that's been converted into some, like, murder machine. I don't... It, it looks great. <laughs> Tell you what it is. It is lore bait for trailers. That's what it is. But, like, what is its actual practical use or purpose? It's not... Ghost kid... I don't, I don't foresee... Ghost kids in possession of robots being like, dur, 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 you know, bur, 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 I need to design a device that will kill people. You know, like that that doesn't make sense to me. Right. It has to be Afton. Yeah. And then the question is like, why Afton? To extract rem Like, if we know that agony and torment are things that kind of funnel his experiments, fuel his experiments, then this has to be like a, this guy looks in agony. He's feeling a lot of emotions. I feel like he might be able to exude some silvery mercury goo that'll give people the gift of everlasting. <laughs> if I hear Matthew Lillard say remnant, I will never be normal. <laughs> if, you, will, you will either pass out in the theater or just storm out. I don't one know which one. I might do both. Like it's I might pass job. out on the way. It's a, it's a simple gig, really. You just collect the remnant. <laughs> what? <laughs> remnant? And then she just leaves. If, if they say, uh, here's the thing. I task all of you when you go to the theater to see this movie, because let's face it, we're all going to go to the theater to see this movie. When you go to see this movie in the theater and they say remnant, everyone just like, everyone, remnant! I need all y'all to all, call out. Everyone, every last one of you. Even if it's not in relate, maybe it's like, oh, the, the remnant of a time go long gone or whatever. Yeah, yeah just, remnant? remnant? It's... Back in the day, there was the Pee Wee's Playhouse where they had the word of the day, and when they said the word of the day, you had to go, Aah! our word of forever is remnant. We have a couple words of forever. Theory, that's one. Theory, remnant. 
Music Man. There's probably a couple others. Lore. Lore. Lore! Yeah. Psychic friend Fred Bear. Because <laughs> that comes up very frequently <laughs> in casual conversation. Yeah, I... It's got to it's got to be a William Afton device that he's or a Steve Raglan device <laughs> since clearly that seems to be what he is. When there was one shot of him flat onto the camera, I'm like, oh, I got you." Now that there's double angles of him in that same setting saying words that relate to hiring a guy, you you you've thrown me off the scent here, movie. So I'm I'm more confused than I was before. Think it's been missing. This has got to be a dream sequence, I feel what like. What is this? That's why the place shut down. Okay, and we and it's got locking devices and stuff. Another poster back there. Nothing too exciting. See some plushies in the back at the prize counter. Oh. The police searched Freddy's. Hey. They never found the kids. <laughs> oh, this is. What are you doing? What? Why are you doing this? This is. This is that great jump scare. Oh, that is great. That is such a win. I love that. So good. That's why the place shut down. The police searched Freddy's. Hey! They never found the kid. Wait, so this kid? Who are you? So. Kid? Black hair. Like orange shirt. He's not one of these kids. Is he? Or is it... Is he Hat Boy? Is he Freddy? Have we, have we seen here when, when they run away? He is wearing the same shirt. Is that him? Is that the same kid? Oh, this kid looks smaller. No, I guess it is, because you see the same haircut. Ring cut and then the arrow. Okay. Which makes sense, because he's luring you to Freddy. What is this? It's just for some reason, Why he looks different without down. the hat. The police searched Freddy's. Hey! Okay. He also looks pretty old. Like, he's older than I would expect him to be. But yeah, no, okay, so this is the kid who's Freddy. They never and he's leading to Freddy. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Ghost children. Possessing giant ah! robots. Ghost children possessing giant robots. You don't. It's too late. He's coming. What? No! Are you kidding me? <laughs> really? What? No! Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> oh, how exciting! I sorry, I was really distracted. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to Spring Tramp here in a second. Which again, like I'm floored that we're seeing him. I'm surprised that we're seeing him. This Hajoween. Oh, the, the very strange font for the L's. <laughs> it's Hajoween, <laughs> like backwards days. Okay, go Foxy. They got the red, so they're keeping the red eyes. They're committed to these red eyes, Ash. That's how you show they're evil. Children. Who's this? Have we seen this guy? He's, he's got a crowbar. So I'm wondering if he's part of the initial group that's uh, breaking in, or maybe this is a continuation of that scene that you saw at the beginning of the trailer. And so this is just another one of the, like, presumably all of them are gonna die, or all of them but one of them is gonna die, at which point then they live on to tell the tale, right? That is just like <laughs> horror movie trope storytelling. Corey! Look at him, getting all the trailer love. Man, nice. So he's hanging out with Golden Freddy in the back of his cab, just the, the, the largest of Golden Freddies. This is like the most spacious of Ubers. Possession. Out there. <laughs> Look how big it is relative to how are you getting the body in there? Giant robot. It's, it's still, it still kind of drives me a little nuts. Robots. That'll be the theory. We could do a theory about anything with this with this movie, and the theory I want to pursue here is how could you get a giant animatronic into the back of a cab? That's that's the theory I'm going for. Ghost children. 
possessing giant robots. Who's back there? Who's chasing her? So Chica is attacking Vanessa, which is interesting. She's also in yellow. I'm just trying to figure out, like, because I, I, I'm suspicious of her, right? Like, here's the thing. You don't have just, like, casual cop who come. I've watched enough horror movies. I've watched enough thriller movies. You know that they're like, oh, I'm the casual cop who knows more than they let on about what's going on in this town. Usually they have a deeper connection to the story, right? That is just, like, again, you watch enough media and content and study enough stuff. You see the patterns develop. That's how theory crafting comes to be, right? And so I see, like, casual cop being like, let me tell you the story of this place, and I'm still hanging out around here all these years later. Usually they're connected to the events in some capacity, right? So I see her, and I'm like, and her name's Vanessa, and I know that in the game, Vanessa was possessed by Glitch Bunny and was evil, maybe, question mark, but probably, you know, it's either a misdirect, and it's like, oh, she was fine the whole time, or it's a, she is not what she appears to be. And so I'm, I'm wondering, her being in yellow, it's not purple, but it, if it connects her to like Springtrap being yellow or something like that, I don't know. It's, that's definitely me overthinking it. But the fact that also the animatronics are attacking her, I mean, we know that the animatronics attack adults, security guards, maybe? So, and and clearly they're attacking people who are hurting the pizzeria, but we haven't really seen anyone attacking. That's interesting, actually. We haven't seen anyone attacking. Have we seen anyone attacking Mike yet? We see Mike, like, running scared, and even in this final shot where he's like, oh, no, but that, but then they cut it in a way that it's like he's running away from Springtrap. Hmm. This is also one, one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, I'm counting, I'm counting, I'm counting fingers. It's kind of wonky here. Is this a five finger thing? One, two, three, four, five. Is this Chica or is this Springtrap? This could be Springtrap's hand. Yeah, it looks like the pinky and the ring finger are in the same um, finger. Is sleeve. it, or, or were they merged together? Like it, this, this looks. It look, it's a, it's a funky focus thing. Because here's finger. What, what's this then? That's a finger, isn't it? Yeah, but that would mean like there was a very little, very skinny finger and very thick pinky. Yeah, I guess. Huh. Because this, I mean, because this could be spring, like maybe it's like, ah, I'm going to kill you. Weird. Because it is weird. Because up to this point, the only people that we've clearly seen them attack, everyone's running away. But the only people that we've actively seen like attacked are... Yeah, and in like bodily harm. And it's not it's not coming from the animatronics themselves. It's weird. Huh. So that's Fox. She isn't running away from Foxy though, and Foxy is Tell me how looks like she, it's hunting him her down. Stop them. Who's this? Foxy, swiggity swoogity coming for that booty. Okay, so this is the guy that we saw earlier running away with the crowbar. So again, like maybe he again gets chased. Oh, by Foxy. You don't. <laughs> oh, poor body. <laughs> it's too late. He's coming. <laughs> I love his like sinister clown laugh. <laughs> it's like evil Krusty the Clown. <laughs> he's, he's got himself a knife. Look at him sharpening his knife. The finger and the finger, I will say, the fingers do match the Vanessa shot. They, they look kind of close. So maybe he's, maybe he, he do be stabbing Vanessa. Huh. So we we see a, a fair bit of spring trap in this one, which again, I was not expecting at all. He's coming. It's a good shot. This is going to be a weird movie for a lot of people, I feel like. This is going to be a weird movie for a lot of people. Huh. 
He looks good. Yeah, I I look at this. So I I you know, looking at this, I'm like, oh, I understand this, all all this stuff. And the premise of that they set up, because again, remember, you have to remove yourself from like a, being a fan of the series and think about it from like the just general viewpoint of people who are just horror fans wanting to understand, like, do I go to see this movie? And so I hear lines like, ghost children possessing giant robots or giant animatronics or whatever. Like, I, yeah, I get that. But then when it comes to, and then also here's the like, yellow purple the the yellow bunny man with the knife i guess that shows you who your like main villain is or it kind of gives you a sense of like oh there's another villain here so it sets him up in an interesting way but then you have moments like swiggity swiggity coming for that booty and it's it's you're showing me a little bit too much like i feel like i'm seeing a little bit too much of the animatronics and i want them more sinister when it's almost too well lit at this point and so on one hand, I'm like, oh, spooky animatronics. But because you're dealing with characters who are stiff and and in a very specific look, I do wish that they were just a little bit more like disguised in darkness when they turn evil. So that way there is more of this like looming threat about them as opposed to, you know, you can see that, you know, maybe they're not as like... It's hard to sell the threat of slow, clunky robotics. And so they have to kind of like lurk and they have to be shadowy and frightening. And in a lot of the shots, like the one that came right before this one too, where you see Freddy. Like we're in, we're, like a lot of these close-up shots where you're not seeing the full body details, those really read for me. And those sell the like horror movie. But like this shot, I'm like, oh, I'm not really, like I should feel like this is threatening in some way. And it doesn't feel threatening because it's like, oh, he's just the robot, right? Like, I wish that there was a, right? He's kind of like goofy. And if he had been like a little, shot maybe a little bit closer or shot where he's more in darkness or more in the, in the corners or whatever, it would, it would sell that fear a little bit more. I am very curious. I'm excited about it. I am very curious how this is all come together. It's, it looks like a lot's there. And again, I've said this in, in past trailer reactions and I stand by it, which is, if you can sell the aesthetics of this world, I think you get. I think this movie sells the world. I think it sets up the characters. I think it sets up the premise. And hey, yellow bunny man murderer, who you know, like mascot murderer. That's cool. You know, ghost kids haunting like possession stuff. Very cool. And so I think that there's enough in there that if you can sell me on those premises. I will buy in for part two. From a story standpoint, I am, you know, like, I think you have a little bit more leeway there, but you don't want to be thrown out too much. I think my other big watch out here is, like, this shot, for instance, going back to what I was saying before about the idea of casting him in shadow, this is a great shot of Springtrap. He's, he's in shadow, it's spooky, I can very clearly see his eyes, and I can make out that he's kind of like ruined and, and broken up and things like that. But it is scary in a way that I'm like, oh, I can't fully make out what this monster is, and I think that's really effective. That's what I'm saying about for the other guys. Um, but I do, like, my biggest thing is hopefully they don't overload the audience with lore. and, and Which I hate, you know, me being the lore guy that's saying something, but... If you just sell me the premise of haunted robots in pizzeria with, with murdered kids, that's kind of all you need. Like, that's a really solid, you know, first movie to set it up. And then it, it leads the mystery of, you know, and you can seed out the mystery of, well, who did the murders and how do we find this guy and this and that. Like, and then that's part two is then who is this guy? And then part three is your climax where the whole thing gets purged and spirits are released in this and that. That's your three-act structure. Um... I don't know how big of a role Springtrap's going to have. Um, they are showing a lot of it, though. Um, and it could just be like a, a tease or something like that. But I'm curious. I don't know. I when the, October, huh? <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. October 27th. It's coming up. It's coming up. I'll be there. Are you going to be there? Are we going to go see this together? Can we? The, oh, we should at, let's talk to Rachel and let's absolutely do like theorist trip out to the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Oh my gosh, midnight viewing? 
Oh, midnight viewing. Maybe we can even go to the Alamo Draft House and get real fancy with it. Ooh, oh man, that'd yeah. be so sick. Do you think they're gonna have like a Freddy milkshake? They love doing milkshakes for specific movies. I think that'd be really cool. <laughs> they better have pizza, the Freddy Fazbear pizza. Oh, pizza, pizza duh. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that you went to milkshake though. <laughs> Specialty milk. Uh, how about let's do the low hanging fruit of pizza? I think. No. So there you go. That's a trailer reaction. How are people? How are, how are people hype? I mean, looks from many failed games to an entire franchise to an entire movie. The hard work and dedication of all this is. Yeah. I mean, like that's the thing. Is it is wild to see all of this be realized at this point. It's incredible, and I love the fact that Scott has been so involved in the process to make sure that it is his story and doing him justice. Because one thing that I've learned from doing a lot of different projects at this point, from the streamies to our channels to Game Lab and the runner back in the day and this and that is like, to really sell your vision, because there's so many people involved with making big productions like this. You know, even if it's a smaller budget movie or whatever, there's so many people involved and so many decisions that get made. And if you, like it's very easy to be like, well, you guys deal with it or whatever, and here you go. But the fact that it seems like he's been really protective of the IP and making sure that every step along the way it's been true to his vision, I think that's that's big kudos to there. And you can see, like, it feels like a part of this franchise as opposed to something that is, like, vaguely tangentially related to it. So, no, it's really cool to see. I'm really excited about it. I am still, I still sit on the, fa I, I still sit on the, I am cautiously optimistic about it. I love the aesthetics. It seems like most of the acting is going to be really solid there. I think the shots look really good. Is it going to get the scares? That's the question, right? And also, is it supposed to be three hours? I saw like all these news articles saying like, Five Nights at Freddy's movies, it's three hours. It's a long time. That's a lot. That's a lot of watch time. Have you not seen this? Maybe it's just three hours. How long will Blumhouse's FNAF movie? Thanks to the updated Rotten Tomatoes main page, it is supposed to be three hours. I, for those of you who don't know, horror movies are supposed to be 90 minutes. Like, horror movies and kids' movies are like 90 minutes. You're in, you're out, you're, it's scary, you're done. This, I, there's no way. There is no world where I can see this being three hours. That would be like one of the longest horror movies known to mankind. And and to sustain, and, and the thing that you don't want people to walk out of a movie with is like, oh man, like, oh, thank goodness that's over. Like, it, it didn't hold you that whole time. So, I don't know. Maybe true to this, this franchise, maybe they didn't know what lore to cut. <laughs> or maybe they're like, here's all the lore, and then we'll trim it down later. I don't know. Three hours is a long, long horror movie. It's a long movie in general. Like Oppenheimer was three hours. Oppenheimer is a movie that's like three And even Oppenheimer, I'm like, you could have cut a half hour out of that movie. Easy. Three hour FNAF horror movie? Frame by, that's a lot of frames. It's a lot of frames to be going one at a time. But it's three hours and zero minutes, which feels very intentional. They Well, they needed to hit the three hour marks to get an extra mid roll ad in there. Oh, they need, they, they yeah. extended the trailer, they extended the credits a little bit so they get that extra mid-roll ad right. in the middle. Totally. <laughs> Classic YouTuber. Oh, it has to be 10 minutes and fits in there. So anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. FNAF movie, are you excited? Are you not? Let me know. Are we all going to join together at the Alamo Draft House to celebrate this at midnight on the day it launches? I don't know, or, or wherever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya!